Hi, this is Anthony Parent of Parent to Parent in Win LLP, the IRS medic. And in this video, I want to talk about something that routinely comes up with all of our offshore voluntary disclosure clients. And this has been true uh, since our first OVTP clients in 2009. And that's this issue that everybody always, I mean, in every case, they checked no on line 7A of their Schedule B. And line 7A of Schedule B asks specifically whether or not you have a foreign account. And here's the thing. Um, people say, well, I can't opt out or I can't use a streamline program because I said I didn't have it. I lied to the IRS. Well, here's the truth. That in of itself isn't fatal to opting out or going for a streamlined program. It's really something you got to take a look at your entire facts. And here's the reason why. Well, one of the things is most tax software would default to the no position. That is, you would have to go in and intentionally know that you would have to manually override what it wants to put in there by itself. And that what it wants to put in is no. That's one thing. And the second thing is most people just didn't see this. It's one of these things where that the speed limit went from 65 to 55. Did you slow down or did you continue to go 65? That's the way to think about how this entire foreign compliance came into place with FBAR reportings. Sure, people knew that it existed, but really FBARs were something to detract criminals, actual criminals, not people not reporting things, from their criminal enterprises. Crimes like drug trafficking and money laundering. That's sort of the thing the FBAR was intended to do. So that um, the Schedule B, checking no, doesn't mean you can't get into a streamlined program. It doesn't mean you can't opt out of a standard uh, OVDP. It's really something that's just a fact. Not a great fact, but not a fatal fact at all. And you do know who agrees with me on this. And let me get to it. Here, let me go to my blog here. Let's take, let's, let's listen to the IRS's guidance on taxpayers who make a mistake on their Schedule B. I'm going to read it right here. I'm on my website. Um, schedule or section 4.4.2616.3.4.5 on FBAR penalty willfulness. The mere fact that a person checked the wrong box or no box on a Schedule B is not sufficient by itself to establish that the FBAR violation was attributable to willful blindness. So how's that? Right? Is that could we be any clearer? That okay, it might be a fact, and there might be other things to put there. And there might have been other accounts you didn't include. So that of itself is not critical. And you know, really the reason why I'm writing this was a, a pretty good article. Uh, by Deborah Jacobs and uh, Janet Novak, and this is in Forbes, and a lot of people have been reading this article, freaking out. And this is really my response to it, because here's their article right here. And, you know, as I'm reading it closely, it's not really all that fear-mongering to me, but if, if you step into the shoes of somebody with who has made a problem, it gets really scary. And that's really the thing where they're sort of mentioning, well, the Schedule B, you, 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 you did. The catch to qualify that you must certify that previous lapses resulted from non-willful conduct and they say it's negligence and it's vaguely defined. Well, for us, it's not all that vague. We sort of do know cases in which um, somebody is non-willful, um, somebody who is willful and whether what to do about when there's bad facts, because that's really the thing. Um, in every case, there's going to be a bad fact. And in, I can think of one case where someone actually did check um, a few cases. All right, a few, there are a few cases where people did check uh, yes in Schedule B, but that was only for some accounts, not all accounts. But in every case, everybody always has some bad facts. And that's why you're doing this to begin with. And so that's really the thing is to think about um, not to get scared, but to take action. Now, the action I want you to take is to, I hope you could uh, sign up for my F bar, or for my uh, offshore webinar uh, where I go over the entire history of voluntary disclosure uh, from the income tax being imposed in 1913 to the imposition of universal tax jurisdiction only by judicial fiat. There was never a law passed. They just decided that everything you make anywhere should be taxed. 
Um, that was a U.S. Supreme Court decision. There was never any law. And then we're going to talk about what happened in 1962 uh, with the passing of subpart F income. That sort of ruined a lot of great tax shelters. But a lot of people might still think your worldwide income, if not reportable, is only reportable upon distribution, not deferral. And then the other thing is the Bank Secrecy Act of 1970, which imposed the F bar reporting requirements, but that was really to stop terrorists and money launderers and drug traffickers, not the regular person who has a foreign account. So please sign up for that, watch it. It's gonna give you a great perspective you might not have otherwise. And the other thing too is you might, you do want to, in Forbes, they do talk about getting an experienced offshore uh, tax firm. Now we might not be the tax firm for you, so I would invite you to learn a little bit about us. Um, to see how we do things. We charge people uh, fixed fees, so we focus on results, not necessarily high uh, legal bills of, of time. Um, so that might be something to look for. We, again, we might not be the firm for you, but we might be. This is Anthony Parents of Parents, Parents, and Win LLP, the IRS medic, and I thank you for watching.